Then we're going to be talking about uh, airspace. It's something that uh, even airline pilots find confusing because most of the time they just go where somebody tells them. They don't worry about what kind of airspace they're in. And back when you weren't flying, you probably knew it, but uh, kind of faded away. So we're going to go over all this again. First of all, we, we start off with G airspace. And uh, most places, it starts at 700 feet above the ground or 1,200 feet above the ground. And in G airspace, you can think of government free or good. You only have to have one mile visibility in clear clouds. So the weather minimums are, are pretty loose. And then uh, the next type of airspace you run into is the E airspace, which is above the G airspace. And in E and all the other airspaces other than G, up to 10,000 feet, your weather minimums are going to be uh, 2,000 feet to the side of your cloud, 500 feet below, or 1,000 above, and 3 miles visibility. You can think of three 152s. Three miles visibility, a thousand above, five hundred below, two thousand to the side of the cloud. And that's an all types of controlled airspace up to ten thousand feet. So we've got the E airspace here above the G airspace. And then let's say we have a place where there's a control tower. That's D airspace. You can think of dialogue. You have to talk to the tower when you're within five statute miles of the geographical center of the airport. And usually it's 2,500 feet above the ground. But the exact dimensions are, are marked on the sectional chart. So D airspace is, uh, you can think of dialogue, you have a control tower to talk to. And then, the, you got G and D. Way up here, you've got A airspace above 18,000 feet. Everything up there has to be on an IFR flight plane. And then we also have, in, in venture areas, we have C airspace and B airspace. One of my friends calls these the uh, cones of doom or the rings of terror. The uh, busy area here. This is like a large city here. We've got the B airspace. In B airspace, you have to have clearance to enter. And in the busier areas, we have class C and class B airspace. In Class C airspace, you have to have communication with approach control before you go in there. In other words, they have to have used your airplane number talking to you. Uh, you have to have a transponder with mode C to go in there, and also with a Class B. The difference, the big difference with Class B is you have to have clearance to enter. You have to actually be cleared to enter Class B airspace. And there's no F airspace in the United States. Uh, F airspace is where IFR traffic is separated as much as practicable, which sounds like they kind of put them in there and hope they don't hit. So we don't have that here. And that's, that's probably a good thing. So weather minimums, as we said, for all this type of airspace are, you can think of three 152s up to uh, 10,000 feet. About 10,000 feet, their airplane's going faster than 250 knots. So then you need to think of five F-111s above 10,000 feet in controlled airspace. You've got uh, five miles visibility, and you have to be 1,000 feet above or below the clouds, and you have to be a mile to the side. Now, a mile seems like a lot, but if you think about something coming out of the cloud, and you're going the other way, doesn't take long for a mile to get used up. So uh, 
That's why you've got the more stringent conditions above 10,000 feet. I think I'm good.